Welcome to another OpenTunes animating tutorial. In this video we're going to be talking all about color, changing the color and the style of different objects. So I'm going to draw a little circle right here in the middle. And so um, we're not going to be doing a whole lot with animation. Well, well, we'll create a simple animation just so we can illustrate the power of the way colors are managed in OpenTunes. So I just created this first frame. I'm going to come down to frame 2 over here. Select this cell and we'll just draw a little circle kind of getting smaller and doing something over here. And it's all being drawn in our color, which is black. So we have our animation is going to do this. And um, everything is in color black. Our project, or our level rather, this is the level palette for the level called B. These are the different things we have drawn, the different objects we have drawn in level B. And we've brought over these drawings into our actual animation, into our actual um, different frames of our animation. So everything is level B. It's important to know because if we create a new level, we ha we're also going to have to recreate a new palette. Unless we have it over here from our global palettes. But uh, right now we only have two colors. Transparency, color zero, which has no options. And then if we click on color one, color one right now is set to black. If we want to change color one, we can just come up here and drag this. Maybe make it more, if we move this right to the middle, this little triangle here is showing us a mixture of white, black, and whatever color we have selected. So right now we're going full to our color. No white, no black, and just full color. What that's going to let us do is, is either choose green, blue, any color we want to. Or if we kind of come into the middle of it, then we start mixing in some white. That's just the way that this color wheel works. We can also use these bars down here to select a red, green, blue value, or we can do HSV. Um, we can also select the a transparency, is this A alpha. And if we know a certain code, if you're familiar with colors, you can type in like 255 red, 255 green, and 100 blue, and it creates this color, this yellow color. So lots of different ways to pick a color, but uh, more importantly than picking the color, which I'm sure you're gonna be able to figure out, is what happens to our drawings. So all of our different level drawings are gonna change to that color. And if we click over here in our frames, we see everything is changed. That's really nice because if we have a hundred or a thousand frames and we decide we wanna change uh, the color, we don't have to go, we don't have to get our, for example, let's add in a, another style down here real quick. We click this button, we have a second color. Let's make our second color red. Let's grab our fill tool and let's fill the inside of this with red. So then we do have to go to every frame and fill it every time because it's a different, that one's not closed so it won't fill. That one's not closed either. So we can change those, we can close them up real quick. We'll close them in blue. Close that, we'll grab this and close this. Okay, so now when we go, we can actually go back and fill those. Hope I'm not losing you here. I just wanna show you, oh, we just filled it with blue. We wanna fill it with red because we have blue selected. Whatever style is selected is the style it will fill it in. I say style because it doesn't have to be a color. Our style can be a texture, it can be, um, it can be a brush. So there's different options here. But now if we're like, ah, that red is just too, we don't, we don't like that red so much, we can come down here to color two and we can change it to yellow. And what that'll do is change every frame. Anything that was ever colored in that in color two is now yellow. So it's a much better way to do it than you can have much greater control over your color. I think you can probably see how that would be when you have lots of different frames. Also, so right now this color one is really a style. What we should call it is maybe um, object stroke underscore stroke. This is much more descriptive because it doesn't have to be a color at all. And I'll, so if we click over here under uh, vector, we can actually change this to maybe like this one here. It looks sort of like some, kind of like railroad tracks maybe. And it is a color, but it's also a, uh, a, a brush. I guess you can call it a brush or a texture. It's a, a, a style. We can change this around to be sort of different. So there's all these different options we have here. Oh. And they're gonna, you know, make it look a little bit different. And it changes it for every frame. So now every frame has that type of the, the 
the stroke is going to be this type of vector. Raster we can't do, and raster is going to be different types of brushes too. If, you're, if you've used uh, Krita or if you've used um, Photoshop brushes or GIMP, this is kind of what you're going to be more familiar with. You can use these, but we can't use them right now. It's not going to be displayed because this is a vector level. We'd have to go to File, uh, New Level, and make it a raster level to use those. Uh, and then if we're using, if we're in a raster, we can't use the vector one, so it's one or the other. Um, different settings for how we can control that is over here. So if we grab this, there's different settings. This one doesn't have any settings applied. That's going to be for our raster. But uh, texture is going to be, so we can change this color too. We can call it uh, fill. And so this is now not necessarily a color because we can come to texture and we can change it. And so now we have a texture for the inside. Maybe this, uh, there's a, a sky one that's pretty cool somewhere right here. So we have a sky for our fill and we have a vector for our stroke, and now that changes it in every one. Well, wait a second, why didn't it change it in this one? Well, it did, it just doesn't look like it did in our levels. But in our animation, it actually, it really is changed. So now we have our animation here, and we have it animating according to the rules that we set up on our palette. So what the palette really lets us do is add in, we can add in as many things as we want, we can go through and change them, we can change it to be a color, so we have all these different colors to work with. We can change it to be a texture. So we have all these different textures we can work with. And we can change it to be, uh, well, it's a vector, but the, the vectors behave sort of differently. Um, but then we can apply it, we can apply it however we want. So if we grab a few things, if we, if we want to draw in this brush, this vector brush, we select the brush, select this vector style, and then we start drawing, and it looks like that style. If you want to draw on this one, this looks like this style. This style is associated with a color by default. Can we draw in this? Yeah, I guess we can We can draw in these backgrounds too, or these textures. Um, and then we can also fill in certain ones too. So we draw this. It's going to be here. We grab the fill bucket, and we can fill in brick. And we can fill in with sky on this part. And so... Just be aware that that's how these work. We can't fill the actual stroke here. To change that, we have to get the selection tool, select that object, and then while it's selected, we just click, and we'll change it to the brick. Click, change it to a solid color. Click, change it to the sky-looking thing. Or click, change it to this type of vector brush. And then if we want to change the way that it looks, we have to, we have to actually change the style. <laughs> I feel like I'm really... I'm really just kind of repeating myself, but I really want to drive this home because it's sort of, it's just not as intuitive as you might think if you're used to using Paint or Photoshop or GIMP. It's a little bit different. And the most important thing to note is when we go File and we go New Level, even if it's a vector level, and we go OK, all of a sudden, all of this is gone. Our palette now is just back to transparency and black. And so and we can't really click on these. We can see them, but that's because they're on this other level. They're on level, I think it was level B, and now we're working on level C. And level C is in column two right now, so we, we're working on a different level, different layer, if you will. It's just different drawings, and so now we can still draw over top of this, but they're completely separate from these first ones. So if we, want, we can just turn off viewing the first ones by clicking here, and now we're seeing what we're really seeing here. But because we've selected in this column one, now we're seeing all of our palette for levels B. And so what, I guess what I really want to just illustrate by that is levels have their own palettes. So this level, which we called level C, has a different palette. If we want to bring that in, um, we can go like this. So we select the, these ones that we want, and we can just right-click and go to Copy, and it copies the one that's selected. Can we select multiple? Yeah, we can select them all by just um, holding the Shift key and select all of them. They all become selected in white. Select the last one, the first one, while holding the Shift key. Then we go right-click, Copy, and then we come over to our other palette, and we can go right-click, Paste, Insert, and now we have the same ones available between our different levels. So that's one way. We'll talk more about managing palettes um, in future videos as well. Play with those, play with all these different things. If, Like I said, if we want to do raster, we can't really, we can set it, but it's not going to display 
because this is a vector, not a raster. So when we go, it just becomes invisible. That's because we don't have, uh, this isn't a raster layer. We have to go new level, create a new raster level, and it's called D. And now this is a raster level, so we can draw, but we can't select. So if we want to draw in, in a different style, this one we've, ah, we really could change it, and this one will stay the same. So we can come over here to our raster, and we can click on like this dry brush, and now everything we draw will be in this dry brush. So this way it doesn't manage them as well. This is what we really can just click because it's just manipulating the pixels. Does that make sense? Ooh. And so we can come over here and change the color. It changes the, co the color of all these, but the style ch kind of changes. Play with the rasters, play with the vectors. Just the more you play with this, uh, you know, there's not anything I can say that's really going to help you learn this more than just getting in and getting your own experience, playing with them, understanding how levels work with each other and how the raster and vector layers work and how this different palettes, different styles work. I hope you found that informative. hope I didn't confuse you too much on that. Go ahead and leave your questions and comments below. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And we'll see you in the next video where we're going to actually start doing real animation using OpenTunes.